Okay, sige. Let's continue. So again, we are now on the sympathetic nervous system and our major neurotransmitter for this is the norepinephrine. So last time we ended with how uh, norepinephrine is produced in the body. So do not forget that we are producing this through our adrenergic neurons, specifically on the axon part. And our precursor for making norepinephrine is the tyrosine. So we have series of steps, like when the tyrosine gets inside the cell, it will be converted to dopa, and then to dopamine, and then it will be stored inside the vesicle for it to be converted into norepinephrine. And the process of exocytosis follows after, and it is just like with how acetylcholine is being released from the inside of the cell. It's through the help of the calcium influx and then the opening of the gates. Okay, and then uh, what's the difference? Now, norepinephrine's fate, marami, maraming fate itong norepinephrine natin. So, pag na-release na siya, what are the fates again? It can be degraded by the enzyme COMP. This is called catechol O-methyl transferase. That's the COMP. And then, Madigrade yan siya going back to tyrosine. And then, pwede ding mag-bind siya sa kanyang mga receptors. We have four postsynaptic receptors. We have the alpha-1, beta-1, beta-2, and the beta-3. And then we have one presynapse, presynaptic receptor, and that is the alpha-2. So that is, again, presynapse. Since the junction between the axon or the neuron and a cell containing the receptors are called the synaptic cleft. Okay? So magbind dyan yung norepinephrine natin. However, we have the third fate for our norepinephrine, and that is going back inside the cell. Dito siya dadaan sa net, norepinephrine transporter. So 90% of the released norepinephrine will be taken back inside the cell. And it might be degraded by the enzyme inside, and that is the MAO, monoamine oxidase. Okay? So dalawang enzymes ang pwedeng mag-degrade sa ating norepinephrine, the COMP and the MAO. Again, COMP is catechol o methyl transferase, while MAO is the monoamine oxidase. Okay? Sige, do you have questions with the release of the norepinephrine? Baka may gusto kayong i-clarify. Now, I think nabigay ko ito sa inyo last time. We have drugs that will inhibit the formation of the norepinephrine. Yung sa ganitong tyrosine. Tyrosine is the precursor, meaning that is our raw material for us to have the norepinephrine in the body. That's the tyrosine, meaning sa COMP. COMP is catechol O methyl transferase. So the enzyme COMP will be degrading the norepinephrine. COMP is found in the blood and even in our gut, our gastrointestinal tract. That is the reason why we cannot administer norepinephrine and even epinephrine and dopamine orally. So naka, tapos na kayo with your hospital internship and I hope you noticed that norepinephrine, epinephrine and even dopamine are not given orally. The reason why is the comp can be found in our gut, in our intestinal tract and at the same time in our blood. And if we have administered these drugs um, in uh, orally, via oral route, then wala pa rin siyang saysay kasi 
i-degrade lang sila. Hindi sila magkakatake ng kanilang actions, hindi sila aabot sa kanilang mga receptors. Yeah, hindi siya reversible once naging L-DOPA na siya. Kasi diba, pasok si tyrosine here and then gagawin siyang DOPA or L-DOPA to be exact. And then DOPA, L-DOPA will become uh, dopamine. So we have series of enzymes there. The tyrosine hydroxylase is the one that will help uh, convert tyrosine to DOPA. And then we have DOPA, we have PH here, tyrosine hydroxylase. And then we have DD, DD here, DOPA decarboxylase that will convert DOPA to dopamine. And then inside, it's the VMAT that will store the dopamine inside the vesicle. And then inside the vesicle, that's the time it will be converted to norepinephrine using the enzyme uh, DDH, dopamine beta hard hydroxylase. So our rate limiting step wherein we can no longer reverse it is this part. This one is reversible. If tyrosine becomes L-DOPA, then we cannot turn it back to tyrosine. That is why it is called the rate limiting step. Now again, we have drugs that will inhibit the formation of norepinephrine. And then we have here the metyrosine that will inhibit the tyrosine. And then I have mentioned this last time. We also have here the reserpine that will inhibit the storage of the dopamine inside the vesicle. And then we also have drugs that will inhibit the opening of the gates here to prevent exocytosis. We have the guanethidine and the bretelium. Okay, bretel. I believe that ang spelling. Ano man na? Bretelium. Okay. And then we also have drugs that will inhibit the reuptake. Again, the process of um, going back of the norepinephrine inside the cell through the norepinephrine transporter is called the reuptake. Now we also have drugs that will inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine inside the cell, and that is the cocaine. And let us also include the PCAs. PCA means tri uh, tri carboxylic acids or yung ating antidepressants. Okay, mga antidepressants natin yan. Okay? May nakalimutan ba ako? Let me check. You have questions while I'm reviewing if I missed something? Purpose ng cocaine. Cocaine and the TCAs inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine inside the cell. So inhibit niya yung net norepinephrine transporter para yung na-release na norepinephrine cannot go back inside the cell. Okay? And it's free to bind with the different receptors if it is not degraded by COMT. Uh, sorry, na tri ano sinabi ko kanina? Tricarboxylic acid. No? <laughs> Tricyclic antidepressant. PCAs are tri tri <laughs> the our antidepressants ng TCAs. Tricyclic antidepressants. Okay. Any other thing? Wala na? Ito dito sa gitna, DBH. So let ko is pangita sa kung agi yung ano man eh. Beta na ha, beta ng sa tunga. Okay? Anything else? That na. Let us continue. Now let's talk about the different receptors of our norepinephrine. 
So we only have five, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. So nasabi ko kanina, alpha 1, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 are found post-synaptically. Well, we only have a press, we only have one press synapse receptor, and that is the alpha 2. But let's talk about their major location in the body. Now, now these receptors are found from head to toe. From head to toe, good na ha, kanina mga receptors. But they have major uh, location in the body wherein they elicit a pharmacologic response. Now for alpha-1, um, most of the alpha-1 receptors are found in our blood vessels. Okay? So for example, norepinephrine is released and it is able to bind to alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels. Let's talk about the effect. What will happen to the blood vessels if the norepinephrine or even epinephrine will bind to alpha-1? Anong, ma anong mangyayari sa blood vessels? What do you think? <laughs> Dilate or constrict? Dilate. Dilate. Ano na may question mark ang <laughs> uh, answer? Dilay sigurado. Plus, take note. If the norepinephrine or the epinephrine binds to alpha one receptors, the blood vessels will constrict. Okay. So there is vaso constriction. Okay, again, there is vasoconstriction. Now, what is the sequelae for this? What happened to the blood pressure if there is too much vasoconstriction? Ano mangyayari sa BP? Yes. Hi, ma'am. Mutaas mo baba? Taas. Mutaas. Okay, so this class will be equal to increase in the blood pressure. Therefore, um, it can cause hypertension. If we have too much, again, um, norepinephrine and in the body and it is able to bind to alpha-1 receptors. Again, there is increase in blood pressure. So please take note of that. Okay. Questions? I hope dili na ninyo makalimtan ha. Kasi kapag kabalo mo, asa, asa na-locate si alpha-1 receptor mostly, uh, most of, most likely po, kabalo po mo sa ilahang effect. Now, let's talk about the agonist. Remember our ligand. When you say ligand, it's the original endogenous substance, meaning in the body. The substance produced in the body that originally binds to these receptors. We have the NE and the EPI. Sila ang ligand. Pero, pero let's talk about the agonist. When you say agonist, they have the ability to bind to the receptor and elicit pharmacologic activity. So, give me an example of an agonist for this alpha-1. Ano yung alam nyo na agonist natin dito? Agonist ha sa alpha-1. Mag-bind siya sa alpha-1. Tapos, mag-constrict ang blood vessel and then there will be increase in the blood pressure. Let's forget, uh, let's not include the norepinephrine and the epinephrine because they are considered ligands. Again, ligands. They are the original substance na magbabind dyan sa mga receptors na yan. Let's talk about agonists. Synthetic drugs, whatever. Other than the norepi and the epi. Wala? Ay, narad, narad. Okay, very good. This is the phenylephrine. Or we can also include the midodrine here. Okay? But uh, since midodrine is not really a common drug, let's talk about phenylephrine. Where can we find phenylephrine? Asa na to makita ng phenylephrine na What kind of drug? Muzep. Very good. Muzep, decogen, or they are the so-called nasal decongestants. 
Okay? So, paano natin yan siya i-connect? Ngun ako kagain na major location blood vessel, effect vasoconstriction, therefore it can increase the blood pressure. But why is phenylephrine used as a nasal decongestant? Yes, BioFlu also contains phenylephrine. Phenylpropanolamine is also one, though phenylpropanolamine is like banned from other countries. Okay, it has high risk for uh an thousand yung nung tawag sa kitay na kalimot noon ko uh na kalimot ko later malala lang ako na sige later ah dilates the nasal passages. Tama. Pero unsa connection ana niya sa blood vessels? Just <laughs> What happened to you if you have nasal congestion? Blisod ka ginhawa. Tama? Ka ginhawa no. So, ang problem ana nga nagi ka ginhawa. Okay? Yes, tama. There is in like swelling of the blood vessels in the nasal passages. Ang imuhang blood vessels din he sa imuhang ilong banda or swelling, meaning nakadilate sila. Nakadilate sila, thereby reducing the airway. Kaya pag nag-nasal congestion ka, mag-nasal ka o ginhawa. Now, if you are going to take phenylephrine during the time that you have nasal congestion, there will be constriction of this blood vessels. Pag nag-constrict yan, nawala yung swelling, ang mangyayari, there will be more uh, space para dadaan yung hangin. That's how it relieves the nasal congestion. So I hope nasabtan na siya. Okay? So mo ni siya ha, phenylephrine. Okay? Now, phenylephrine and the likes are also used for people with hypotension. Again, pwede din yun. If, if the patient experiences hypotension, there will be severe dropping of the blood pressure. We can give phenylephrine so that there will be vasoconstriction that will lead to the increase in the blood pressure. Okay, so dalawa ang gamit niya, nasal, nasal decongestant and at the same time, drug for hypotension. Okay? What's the name of the question then? So, bawal ang use up sa mga may hypertension, ma'am. Supposedly, bawal dapat ang Nuzep and all the other nasal decongestant to patient with hypertension. Bawal. However, um, our nasal decongestants are OTC drugs, over-the-counter drugs. So, kung sino-sino lang yung pwedeng bumili niyan. And then, sinamahan pa ng advertisement na basta may sipon ka, uh, you have to take these drugs, no? Pero that's, that's our role now as a pharmacist. We have to educate the public that there will be a possibility of an increase in the blood pressure if they're going to take the nasal decongestant. So they have to be very careful for that. Hindi lang kasi siya nagkakaroon ng study here sa Philippines, pero um, yung, yung phenyl phenylpropanolamine pala na sinabi ko kanina na banned na from other countries dahil dyan, dahil maraming ano cases ng hemorrhagic stroke. Yun pala yung iniisip ko kanina. Hemorrhagic stroke. So tumataas yung kanilang blood pressure leading to stroke. Maraming cases niyan kaya naban na siya. But still, since we don't have studies here, enough studies here in the Philippines, we still dispense and we still allow the use of phenylpropanolamine as nasal decongestant. And so is phenylephrine. Pero please, if you have someone uh, na merong hypertension, please educate them na hinay-hinay sa paggamit ng ating nasal decongestants. 
So, may hatag ninyo sa patient na hypertensive tapos gisip on. These are not drugs. Uh, this, itong dalawa ha, phenylephrine and phenylpropanolamine are not drugs to treat cold or sipon. We don't have drugs para sa sipon class. Wala dyan tayo tambala na. These, these drugs are just used to relieve symptoms of cold. Yung congestion. Pero kung tambal dyan sa sipon, wala taan na. Kay remember, Sipon or colds are caused by virus, viruses. Maraming klaseng viruses, maybe a million. So, mahirap class gumawa ng antiviral drug just for sipon alone. That would be very expensive. Okay, virus good. Virus good to siya. And that, ang pag-treat ng virus is very specific. So, wala tay tambal sa sipon. But we have drugs to relieve symptoms of colds. Okay, I hope that is clear. Like the Colgen, Uzep, and mga Simdex. These are just brand names, pero they contain nasal decongestant. It it may be phenylephrine or phenylpropanolamine. Okay, so ulit na ako kung pangutan na kung sa ihatag nato sa patient with hypertension and naisip o na ay may nagclog ang nose. <laughs> Ano, nga nung paraset na mall man. Say connect. Gisip on siya ha. Wala ko nag-ingon nga gihilanat siya. <laughs> ibuprofen. Nga no, ibuprofen man. Sipon lang ha. Again, walang lagnat. Sipon lang. There is clogged nose. And the patient is hypertensive. What are what are we going to give to the patient? I question. <laughs> Ibuprofen, Advil. Pwede ang acetaminophen, pero kung na siya hilanat, na siya like pain na na-feel, kasi paracetamol is an antipyretic analgesic. It has nothing to do with colds. Even ibuprofen, ibuprofen and naproxen are NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So again, it has nothing to do with colds also. So, say hatag sa hypertensive na person nga na ay colds plus tubig-tubig lang yun ta ha? Water. Therapy. And at the same time, pwede din siya steam inhalation, magpausok. Okay? Magpausok. Steam inhalation. If clog na yun ka, ayaw ang nose, and hypertensive ang ato ang patient. It's a mental na haplas. Ano say Corisidin? I'm not familiar with Corisidin. Is that brand name? Or a generic one? Antihistamine? Pwede din naman antihistamine if ever um, ang patient is experiencing allergy that is why na asyay clog nose or runny nose. Most of the time if it is allergy no kay mag runny nose mang yun na siya. Kung nga na ang case. Pero kung ano kung dili di ito siya due to an allergic reaction. It's viral inf viral na infection that is why my colds siya. So Why, why are we going to give antihistamine? So most likely, we, we give water therapy only or steam inhalation. Okay? Sige. So nasabtan ang agonist sa alpha-1 receptor. Pseudo, pseudoephedrine. Uh, <laughs> pseudoephedrine is not really found here in the Philippines. That is actually banned in the Philippines now, but it is available sa uban nga country. So, pseudoephedrine, may brand name nga yan siya, Advil. Advil din yung brand name niya sa, sa India. Parang Advil SE man siguro. Pero, class, pseudoephedrine is another nasal decongestant and it has the same activity with that of the phenyl, phenylephrine. Therefore, we should not give that also to hypertensive patients. Now, why is it banned in the Philippines? Bakit? Hindi makita si pseudoephedrine here sa Philippines. Why is it banned? Say na ah. <laughs> Nga no. Why? Nga naman na. 
pseudoephedrine is a precursor in making methyl amphetamine. Okay? It's a precursor in making shabu. So that is the reason why it is being banned here in the Philippines. Not really addictive, but it's a precursor of making shabu. So it's being banned by the PIDEA. It should not be found here in the Philippines. I hope that is um, <laughs> that is clear. Now, how about antagonist in the ano, class? Alpha-1 receptor. Give me examples of antagonist. So remember, how do we define antagonist? These are drugs that have affinity, meaning they, they are able to bind to the receptors. However, they don't elicit pharmacologic activity. Kaya lang nila. Bind lang sila doon sa receptor and then that's it. Hindi nila kayang i-constrict ang blood vessels. Okay? So what are again the examples of our antagonists? Okay, very good. Those drugs that end with zosin, prazosin, doxazosin, terazosin, and let's also include the tamsulosin. Okay? So para asa ni sila? Mubind na sila sa alpha-1 receptor na naa sa blood vessel. Now, they cannot constrict the blood by the, the blood vessel, so there is no vasoconstriction. And then there is no increase in the blood pressure. Therefore, if, you are, if I'm going to ask you what is the clinical application of these drugs, asa na ito ni sila ginahatag. Kaya ang ilang effect man kay, like no vasoconstriction, so most likely there will be vasodilation. So para asa siya, asa sila. Yeah, they are called alpha-1 blockers. Take note, they are specific sa alpha-1. We call them alpha-1 blockers. These are called, itong phenylephrine, this is called an alpha-1 agonist. Ito alpha-1 antagonist or alpha-1 blocker. Where are we going to give them? These are anti-hypertensive drugs. Though they are not commonly used for people with hypertension, but originally they are anti-hypertensive drugs. Now, hindi sila common, but saan sila commonly ginagamit ngayon? They are commonly used for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Okay, benign prostatic hyperplasia. So those men with problem with their prostate, what do you mean by hyperplasia? Again, we call that benign prostatic hyperplasia. Anong ibig sabihin ng hyperplasia? Anyone? Manawag na lang taan ni. Ay, nagdako. Anong nagdako man? Increased number of cells in an organ. What's the difference between hyperplasia and hypertrophy? Pag hyperplasia class, take note. If you say hyperplasia, there is increased number of cells in an organ. Ano ang dumami? Number of cells in an organ. So kaya siya lalaki kasi dadami yung cells. Pero pag sinabing hypertrophy, muda ko lang dyan yung size. Okay? Hypertrophy is there is, in, uh, there is enlargement of the organ. Again, hypertrophy, enlargement of the organ. Pag hyperplasia, increased number of cells sa tissues or so organ. So I hope that is clear. So this is benign prostatic hyperplasia. The ano, the antagonism na action niya on the blood vessel will relax the prostate of the men na na IBPH. Kasi aside from having the alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels, our alpha-1 receptors are also found in the prostate of men. And again, if we are going to antagonize 
the alpha 1 receptors in the prostate it will be relaxing it will it will relax the prostate thus helping a person with bph okay now what is the most important adverse effect of our alpha 1 blockers that you need to know sa ang iyahang sa ang ilahang pinaka adverse effect kailangan yun na to mabalan for us to help our patients also <laughs> sige unsa <laughs> Low blood pressure or hypotension. Specifically, how do we call that? Tama man na siya kasi eh, maugin na siya ang ma-feel sa patient, no? Kanang munaog ang iyahang blood pressure. But how do we call that? Adverse effect of this alpha-1 blockers. We call that first dose syncope or first dose Phenomenon. Are you familiar with that? Si meaning ana first dose syncope or first dose phenomenon. Nakalimutan na na ninyo. Mawag ang pinaka-importante ninyo mabalaan sa alpha-1 blockers. The patient may experience first dose syncope. First dose ha, meaning ang unang inom niya Sa, sa mga zoocins na yan can drop, can cause drastic na pag-drop ng blood pressure. So tama na inyo hanggangon nga there is lowering of the blood pressure. But when? During the first dose. So ang tendency, malipong ato ang patient. Mag-fall man iyahang blood pressure, mag-hypotension man siya. So, lisod na siya, no? Kung mukalit. Yes, there is possible fainting of the patient. So, anong gagawin natin kapag para hindi ma-experience ni patient ang first dose phenomenon? Sa himo na to. Example na, siya BPH, gitagaan siya, o prazosin, or tamsulosin. First dose niya. Sa himo na to, para dili niya na ma-experience. Yes, that is correct. First, we can advise the patient to take the the, the alpha-1 blockers at bedtime. Okay? Kaya syempre, matulog man siya. So, dili siya madisgrass siya if ever, like sa buntag na siya ginahimo. Pwede siya madisgrass siya because there is painting. Or aside from that, we can taper the dose. Meaning, we can start with a small dose and then we can gradually increase the dose until we achieve the desired dose to be given to the patient. So again, we can start with example, half dose only and then as time goes by, we increase the dose. We increase the dose gradually. That's what we do with our um, alpha-1 blockers. Any question with the alpha-1 receptor? This is a very short review, huh? so meaning Annie, I'm not, I'm not giving all the details sa drugs or receptors the effects detailed i mean a short review only you just have to know where can we find our alpha 1 receptor what will be the effect and what are the examples of the agonist where where do we give our agonist what's the clinical application and lastly the antagonists okay questions Wala. Shall we move on with the alpha-2 receptors? Sige. So where do you think is the major location of our alpha-2 receptor? We know that this is a presynaptic receptor, meaning we can find this before the synaptic left. But in terms of organs or tissues in the body, where can we mostly find our alpha-2 receptors? But 
Brain in the periphery. Yeah, breast synapse. Na mention ko na siya kanina. Pero we mostly found find the alpha two receptors in our smooth muscles. And this that actually includes still the blood vessels. Pero di, take note that this is the only presynaptic receptor that we have for the sympathetic nervous system. Okay? So what is or what are the effects of stimulating our alpha-2 receptors? May unsa. May unsa diha. There will be? Baliktad. Ang alpha 1 and ang alpha, alpha 2, baliktad ang effect nila class. If alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction, this one causes vasodilation. Okay? Vasodilation ha. Tayo with alpha 2 receptor. So what happened to the blood pressure? If there is vasodilation? Low, ma'am. Okay, there is decrease in the blood pressure pressure. So another thing that uh, is actually the responsibility of alpha-2 receptor is it inhibits further release of norepinephrine. Remember, this is found presynaptically. And if we are going to stimulate the alpha-2 receptor, it will inhibit further release of norepinephrine. Hindi na dadami yung i-release -re natin na nor epinephrine. So, most likely, the agonist drugs for the alpha-2 receptors are given for patients with hypertension. Mga anti-hypertensive drugs ito sila. Okay? Kani kay makakos og hypertension, no? Atong agonist, ang antagonist ang tambal sa Hypertension. Pero pag abot sa alpha 2, ang agonist ang anti-hypertensive. What are the examples of alpha 2 agonist? Okay, very good. We have the clonidine. What else? So it's from clonidine, what else? Very good. We have the methyl dopa. Brand name for methyl dopa is aldomed. Yeah, tina, tiza, tizanidine. Tinazidine. Tinazidine? Uh, aldomed. Okay. So again, since stimulating the alpha-2 receptors can cause vasodilation, it can drop the blood pressure and it can for inhibit further release of norepinephrine, then the agonist drugs for our alpha-2 receptors are used as anti-hypertensives. Yeah, guanfacine and guanadrel are also included here sa mga agonist nato. Okay? Now, what do you need to know about these drugs? Methyl dopa is our drug of choice for... Uh, pregnant women with hypertension. So most of our antihypertensive drugs are considered teratogenic. What do you mean by teratogenic? Makakos og? What's the meaning sa teratogenic class? Lahi ang carcinogenic. Carcinogenic can cause cancer. So yes. Okay, very good. Birth defect. Uh, it can cause problems with the development of the fetus or it can cause deformities. Yan. So again, most of our antihypertensive drugs are teratogenic. Therefore, our drug of choice for pregnant women with hypertension is our methyl dopa. Ano kung walang methyl dopa? Anong second? Okay. 
No, nanat hydralazine. <laughs> the second drug is our labetalol. Let me write it sa screen. Okay. Kapamilya yan ng mga beta blockers natin like metoprolol and propranolol. Okay. How about clonidine? What do you need to know about clonidine? Sige. Again, what do you need to know about clonidine? What's the ano, brand name of clonidine in the market? Clonipress, so, no. man, mom. Kata press, very good. It's kata press. However, clonidine, since this is centrally acting alpha 2 agonist, it can cause the blood brain barrier. If it reaches the brain, it can cause sedation. Okay? It can cause sedation. That's our problem with clonidine. Zanidine. Yeah, that's the zanidine. Okay? Sige, how about alpha-2 blockers or alpha-2 agonist? What are the examples? Pulitan dyan ako yung answer ba? Sa examples na to, sa alpha-2 blockers. Na ba? Yes, tama na siya, Kim. Pag-antagonist, mauna akong ginatawag o blockers. Okay? Mauna, sample, alpha blockers. Mauna na itong ginatawag o alpha antagonist. So, klaro na siya. Diri na taha sa antagonist sa atong alpha 2 blockers we have the pentolamine pentolamine and phenoxybenzamine however please take note that these two are not selective they don't only block the alpha 2 receptors but they also block the alpha 1 receptor. So, dalawang receptors yan, alpha 1 and alpha 2. If you are familiar with pentolamine and phenoxybenzamine, both are used for phenochromocytoma. Are you familiar with that condition? Phenochromocytoma. Familiar? Delay. Again? Ah, delay. Delay. Delay mo familiar with this? Okay. <laughs> Sige, again. We have pentolamine and phenoxybenzamine. Uh, these two drugs are not selective, meaning they can inhibit the alpha-2 and at the same time inhibit the alpha-1 receptors. These two are used for phaeochromocytoma and this condition involves formation of a tumor in the adrenal medulla. Again, asa dapat makita ang tumor? Sa adrenal Medulla. Okay? Now, what happens with that tumor in the adrenal medulla found right above our kidneys? This tumor will release a lot of norepinephrine and epinephrine. No na trabaho sa tumor hang na, na form. Mag-release ug daghang epi and norepinephrine. And what will happen to the patient? If, if the patient has a lot of norepi and epi released in the body, there will be increase also in the blood pressure. Therefore, a person that suffers with pheochromocytoma may experience hypertensive crisis. Okay? Pwedeng mag-experience ng hypertensive crisis. Therefore, we can give the phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine for that condition. What's the difference between the two? Phenoxybenzamine 
is ano long acting long acting ang ating tenoxy benzamin uh, actually its duration of action can be 14 to 48 hours or longer ang fentolamin naman is short acting so hindi aabot ng 14 to 48 hours yung kanyang action however since these drugs can decrease the blood pressure then we may expect that the patient may experience orthostatic hypotension that's the adverse effect of these drugs orthostatic hypotension okay questions so far do you have questions that is that is for alpha 2 receptors okay yung chromocytoma yan dyan na wala may panguta na sige wala okay let's let's continue we are done with the alpha receptors let's talk about the beta receptors paulit ang tumor ah that is called pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma. This condition involves the formation of the tumor in the adrenal medulla. And this tumor releases norepinephrine and epinephrine, which um, ano, causes the blood pressure of the patient to increase. So, ang trabaho ni fentolamine and fenoxybenzamine is to decrease the blood pressure of this person having the tumor in the adrenal medulla. Anything else? Wala na? Fenoxybenzamine. <laughs> not, not phenylbenzamine. That's fenoxybenzamine and fentolamine. The patient may experience orthostatic hypotension. Yung hypotension involved in the parang ano, yung position ng patient natin, no? Yung like biglang tatayo or biglang uupo, magdadrop yung blood pressure causing fainting. Mali po nga itong patient na. No. The selective. These are the selective alpha blockers. Sila ang selective. Selective sila for alpha 1. But itong dalawa, they are not selective. When I say not selective, they can inhibit both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors. Wala tayong, ay, meron tayong drug na selective for alpha-2 receptor that is yohimbin. But yohimbin is an alkaloid. Alkaloid na si yohimbin. So ano na siya? Alpha-2 selective antagonist na ginagamit in the treatment of orthostatic hypotension. And dati, ginagamit po na siya for erectile dysfunction sa mga lalaki. Nadili na siya common na drug. Okay? Any question? Wala na? Let us continue. Beta, beta receptors. Let's talk about the beta receptors. Class, pag dili mo ma, para dili mo malibog, asa na sila nabutang? I-separate na ito ang beta 3. Let's talk about beta 1 and beta 2 only. Beta 1 and beta 2. Pila ka buka itong heart? Pila. Isa. So this one is heart. Pila ka buka itong lungs? Duha. So ayun mo kalibugan na ha? Para dili mo malibog asa, asa na butang si beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Always remember, we have one heart, so that is beta 1. We have two lungs, so that is beta 2. Okay? Bronchus. Yeah, kidneys are also included here. Pero uh, most of the effect of the beta 1 receptors are in the heart. Major kasi niya. Uh, though, again, ha, beta 1 receptors are also found in the kidneys, but major location is in the Hard. Okay? 
Sige, let's talk about beta 1 receptors first. What will happen to the patient or the human body if beta 1 receptors are being stimulated by our ligands or our agonist? Say yung effect. We're talking about the heart here. How it will happen to the heart? It's not like a constrict. <laughs> what is a constriction? Our heart does not constrict. Ang naga ang naga constrict ang blood vessel. Pero we are talking here about the heart mismo, the heart muscles, the heart itself. What will happen to the heart if we stimulate the beta-1 receptors? There will be, number one, increased heart rate. We call that positive, uh, sorry, increased heart rate. That We call that positive chronotropic activity or positive chronotropy. Again, if you hear the term, Chronotropy that refers to the heart rate. Thus, if it says positive chronotropic effect, it means there is increase in heart rate. Okay? Sige. Another thing, stimulating our beta-1 receptors can also cause positive inotropy or inotropic activity. What do you mean by that? If, there, if this is increased heart rate, what do you mean by inotropy? Increase, very good, force of contraction. Again, force of contraction. And at the same time, stimulating the beta-1 receptor can also cause positive dromotropy or positive dromotropic activity. What do you mean by that? Humana ang heart rate, humana ang force of contraction. Ano pa ang ginagawa ng heart? Ano pa ang ginagawa ng heart natin? Okay, very good. Dromotropy means there is increase um Conductance velocity. Increase, mag-increase ang conductance ng ating heart. Remember, our heart beats through impulses or through electricity. So, mag-conduct yan siya ng electricity, electrical energy, again, para mag-beat yan siya. So, pag mag-increase ang dromotropy, mag-increase, there is increased dromotropy, then there is increase in the velocity of the conductance of the heart. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear uh -oh, electrical impulses okay so mo na siya ang tanan effect ha sa beta 1 receptors sa heart okay do apil ang kidneys din ha uh, stimulating the beta 1 receptor can also in increase renin release pero let's talk about that sometime later since we are also going to discuss that sa cardiovascular system Okay, so again, the ligands for the beta-1 receptors are still the norepi and epinephrine. They are the original substance, the endogenous substances in the body that originally bind to this receptor. But please give me an example of beta-1 agonist. Beta-1 has specific for beta-1 na agonist. Okay, that is correct. Dobiotamine. What else? Na pa isa. Pareha sila D. Dobiotamine and very good. That is dopamine. Okay? So both of them are antagonists sa beta-1 receptor sa heart. Therefore, if you're going to give a patient either dobiotamine or do dopamine, it means we are um, increasing either the heart rate or the force of contraction or even the conductance velocity of the heart. So you are done with your hospital internship and I don't know if you have observed <laughs> during emergency cases, we are giving patients dobiotamine or dopamine aside from epinephrine or nor 
epinephrine. But all of them are given intravenously since these are called catecholamines. Their structure are that of a catechol. Therefore, uh, pwede silang madegrade ng COMT. Remember the COMT a while ago? So, yun pa rin ang reason bakit hindi natin binibigay si DOPA and si DOBU orally. COMT pa rin ang salarin. Okay? Questions about dopium, do, dobutamine and dopamine? Meron itong, ang ano, ang dopamine ha is like, uh, we give this to the patient if ever we want to increase the heart rate, the force of contraction, and at the same time, if, the, if we want to increase the blood pressure of the patient. That's the difference between dobutamine and dopamine. Again, if we want also to increase the blood pressure of the patient, then that's the advantage of the dopamine. And at the same time, dopamine is, ano, meron siyang protective ability sa kidneys. That's another advantage of dopamine over dobutamine. It is able to protect the kidneys. Yeah, first, uh, what is this? Dobutamine for cardiogenic shakya. That is correct. Dobutamine. How about sep septic shock? Ay, uh, mm, na, not, uh, yeah, septic shock. Anong gina, binibigay natin sa septic na shock? Actually, dopamine is... Dopamine man ang cardiogenic shock. Dopamine doon ang cardiogenic shock. At the same time, septic shock also. Dopamine. Dopamine na. Dopamine. DOC. Drug of choice. For cardiogenic and septic shock. Ang ano, ang anaphylactic shock on sa Say drug of choice. Epinephrine. Very good. Epinephrine. Sige. Okay. Let's move on. Ayun lang yung dapat yung malaman, no? Okay. Asa na ta? Antagonist. Sige, let's talk about the beta-1 blockers. I'm talking about the beta-1, ha? Beta blockers. Beta-1 antagonist or beta-1 blockers? Yes, that is correct. Our beta blockers or the beta-1 antagonist are those drugs that end with olol. So metoprolol, atenolol, propranolol, carvedilol. Though carvedilol does not really end with olol, pero kasama siya dyan. Labetalol. Um, what else? Ito pa man, betaxolol, ayan, mga olols natin are beta-1 blockers. So they have the uh, ability to bind to the beta-1 receptors, but they don't really uh, elicit this pharmacologic action. Therefore, our olols class do not really increase the heart rate. They do not increase the force of contraction. Instead, pinapababa nila. So, this can cause bradycardia actually. Decrease in heart rate. Pero I'll, I'll be discussing that ha, when we are going to discuss uh, drugs for heart failure. Kasi pag nag-heart failure ang patient natin, ito yung binibigay. Our beta blockers, not our agonist. Take note ha, there is heart failure. But uh, for chronic Na, na maintenance drugs, we don't give, syempre, the dobutamine and the dopamine instead the olols. I'll be discussing to you bakit. Okay? So, our olols. Sige. Questions about that? Wala. Let's move on sa mga beta, uh, sa beta 2 receptors natin. Again, we have two lungs. Do not forget that. So, do not confuse beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Now, stimulating the beta 2 receptors will ano, will cause what? Ano mangyayari sa bronchioles natin? 
not necessarily the lungs, but the bronchioles, our airways, what will happen pag mas stimulated the two? Tama, that is dilation. Meaning, there is bronchodilation here. Okay? Sige. So, do, bronchodilation, meaning, lalaki yung airway natin. Makakahinga ang patient natin. What what are the examples of agonist here? Bentolin. Huh? Bentolin. Ben Bentolin is a brand name. What's the generic name? Albuterol. Albuterol or sal. Uh, albuterol. Albuterol or that's the ano kung sa Amerika ang tawag nila albuterol pero sa Philippines class mas kilala siya as salbutamol. Parehas lang yan sila na drugs ah. Pero sa Amerika, just like acetaminophen and paracetamol, they call that acetaminophen somewhere sa Amerika, but we call that paracetamol here. Uh, ito naman, albuterol yung tawag nila sa atin, mas kilala ito as salbutamol. Okay? Um, what else? Yes, very good. That's terbutalin. And then we also have formoterol and salmeterol. Okay? These are the examples of our beta-1 agonist. By the way, ipratropium is not included here. Remember, it, ipratropium is an anti-cholinergic. Though pareha sila ng activity, all of these drugs can cause bronchodilation, but they have different mechanism of action. These all drugs, mga nag sa all, salbutamol, formoterol, salmeterol, they act as agonist on the beta-2 receptors causing bronchodilation. So, binibigay natin ito for asthma and COPD. The ipratropium, ang kanyang mechanism of action is anticholinergic siya, meaning it will inhibit the muscarinic receptor. Remember, our acetylcholine causes dumbbells. And B for dumbbells is bronchoconstriction. Therefore, if we are going to antagonize acetylcholine in its receptor, the drug can cause bronchodilation. And that is the example, ipratropium. Okay? Magkaiba sila. Parehas sila ng gamit, parehas sila ng effect, but they have different mechanism of action. Okay? So again, we give this for asthmatic people or uh, patients with COPD. Ano kaibahan nila? Sa albuterol and uh, or salbutamol and terbutaline are short-acting. Short-acting and rapid-acting ito. Therefore, we give them during asthma attack. Like the time na nag-attack ang asthma, di lima kaginhawa ang patient. Since these are rapid-acting and short-acting, we give the two. Okay? And then, these two, these other two, for moterol and salmeterol, are long-acting. So, unsay difference ato? This one is used during the attack. But this one is used for, these two, I mean, are used for prevention. So, itong formoterol and salmeterol, parang ginagawa siyang maintenance drugs in combination with corticosteroids na magpapuff yung ating patient every day to prevent asthma attack. Ang dalawa, yung short-acting, salbutamol and terbutaline, ginagamit during the attack. So, pag ang patient, there is an asthma, asthma attack, no? Yung dalawa ang ginagamit natin. Now, pero bakit ma'am in combination? Yeah, we can combine the two. You can see in the market, like there is a combination, like duavent, it's a combination between salbutamol and ipratropium. Why? We can always combine them. They have the same action, but they have different mechanism of action. Um, ano, tat, ano na siya ka ng uh, bili siya duplication kasi pag duplication man good uh, lahi nga drug the same mechanism of action the same effect kani bili na siya duplication it's actually an additive na kanang 
interaction between the drug additive siya meaning it can dilate it can um dil dilate the bronchioles more kasi dalawang ano talaga yung dalawang target talaga natin isa magdilate through the beta receptors ang isa magdilate through inhibiting the muscarinic receptor so it has it has ano kanang a good effect a beneficial na effect Okay. Oh, okay. Na. High vent, high vent plus dua vent. Gina combine nato na sila to help the patient breathe. No, kay kay lisod wood. Is sila kagin hawa. Maka to help the patient breath then. Okay. <clears throat> Ipratropium. Ang iprotropium is an anticholinergic drug. So, ang iyahang mechanism of action is uh, inhibit the effect of acetylcholine in the muscarinic receptor. Dili makapalpitate. Dili, ang iprotropium, dili na makapalpitate ha. Ang makapalpitate ka ni sila. Nga naman, dili kayo sila selective. Again, dili kayo sila selective. If they are able to bind to beta-2 receptors, they can also bind to beta-1 receptors. And pag nag-bind sila sa beta receptors, this will be activated. And what's the effect of activating the beta-1 receptor? Increase heart rate. So that is the reason why if we give the patient these drugs, this beta-1 agonist, the patient may also experience palpitation and at the same time tremor. Again, tremor ha, magkurog ilahang kamot. Kasi, um, these are also found in our muscles, ang beta-2 receptors. So, mas stimulate po ang beta-2 receptors ato ang muscles, causing contraction. Therefore, if the patient class um, experiences this one and nagreklamo sila sa inyo ha, you tell them that the tremor after giving these drugs are is actually ano common and hindi siya life threatening okay hindi siya life threatening so it's okay kung maka experience sila ng tremor sige so antagonist sa beta 2 receptor na ah can you give an example Antagonist sa beta-2 receptor. The answer is? Wala. Nga naman, pag i-antagonize na ito na, mag-cause na o bronco constriction. Kinsa may gusto, dili makaginhawa. <laughs> so, wala tay condition class nga ginapakonstrict na to ang <laughs> ang bronchioles kaya dili ta makaginhawa na kung atuan nang i-constrict. So wala at tayo drug nga uh, beta 2 antagonist. Si Asibutulol, appeal pa na siya sa, ano, ha, sa mga olols na to. Okay. Pero uh, anyway, sa sunod ko na na i-discuss ka ng natay mga uh, non-selective beta blockers that are able to bind to beta 2 receptors. So, dili sila pwede ihatag for asthmatic patients. Sige, beta 3, last na before tama ni Udto. Oni ang makita sa PATS. Salbutamol plus guayafenicin. Yeah, salbutamol to this one, to dilate the bronchioles and guayafenicin is a, an expectorant. Therefore, if the patient has phlegm, para ma-expel niya ang phlegm habang ginaubo siya. Wala gina, by the way, wala ginasagol ang ano ha, mga beta-2 agonist and ang mga mucolytic na to. Mucolytic, pampahumok sa phlegma, like ambroxol and what's the other one? <laughs> the most common one, carbocysteine. Kasi it can trigger asthma. Instead na ma-relieve ka sa imuhang asthma, musamot imuhang asthma, paghatagan ni mo ang patient o myokolitik. We'll talk about that some other time later. But since we have two minutes left, beta-3 
receptors are found in the fats and stimulating that can cause breakdown of fats. So we have here lipolysis. And we only have one example here. We don't have an antagonist. And that is the Orlistat. Are you familiar with Orlistat? You're not familiar with Lesofat. Kung sa kanina nang nag-advertise o kinatago ang taba. Ako ka naalagay, Lesofat. Lesofat, di ba? <laughs> oh, di ba mo na ang nag-advertise nag anak? So, muna siya. Kasi it can stimulate the beta-3 receptors and it can cause breakdown of fats. So, ginagamit ni siya as anti. Ay, senical di ay tama. Lahipod na brand ang less of fat. Senical to senical. Obesity. This is anti-obesity. Okay? So, these are, gisummarize lang na to, ha? Ang ato ang sympathetic nervous system. Again, the the ligands are the norepinephrine and the norepinephrine. And per receptors, we have drugs that are considered agonists and at the same time antagonists. So you have to know saan sila na belong. Anong receptors ang target ng mga drugs na ito and at the same time um, agonist ba sila or antagonist. So for the meantime, uh, it's already 11.59. I guess we have to end our discussion here let's continue on wednesday but before that we'll be having our quiz for our review yes include ko niya sa atong quiz <laughs> include natin niya sa atong quiz na lang kay lahi na to ang cns do you have questions wala okay so, okay. so we'll turn off the recording now